Welcome to this DME on-demand presentation for A1 through A9 modifiers for surgical dressings. The information given in this training is correct as of today. The most current information related to this topic can be found on the Noridian Medicare website and the CMS website at the links listed on the slide. Modifiers A1 through A9 have been established to indicate that a particular HCPCS code is being used as a primary or secondary dressing on a qualifying surgical or debrided wound. Modifiers A1 through A9 are used to indicate the number of qualifying wounds on which a specific dressing HCPCS code is being used. If a dressing is not being used as primary or secondary dressing on a surgical or debrided wound, the use of the A1 through A9 modifiers would be inappropriate. Dressings for surgical or debrided wounds must include one of the A1 through A9 informational modifiers. The correct modifier to use is the number that corresponds to the number of wounds the dressing will be used for, not for the number of wounds the beneficiary has. For example, if the beneficiary has four wounds, but a particular dressing is only used on two of them, the A2 modifier would be used with that code. If the dressing is being used on all four wounds, the A4 modifier would be appropriate. Also be aware that it would be inappropriate to use these modifiers to identify the number of times the beneficiary is going to be changing their dressings per day. The frequency of changes must be clearly indicated on the order based on the ordering practitioner's direction. In the following three slides, we will go over an example of how to bill the proper modifier to a claim when wound numbers change, as well as how to bill the dressing that will be used for each wound. As seen on September 1st, the provider ships out two different dressings for two different wounds. The first receives a quantity of 30 per month, whereas the second receives a quantity of 12 per month. As the dressings are applied independently to both wounds, the A1 modifier is appropriate for both. You then get notification that the beneficiary has a new wound that requires one of the same dressings as one of the previous two wounds. The supplier would then supply and bill the additional 15 units with the A2 modifier as the beneficiary now has two wounds that require the same dressing. The modifier corresponds to the number of wounds the dressing is being applied on, not the total number of wounds treated. Finally, on October 1st, the beneficiary still had three wounds. Two of those wounds require the same dressing with a maximum of 30 times 2, which equals 60. So the A2 modifier is correct as that the dressing is being used on two wounds and the beneficiary is using the second dressing on only one of the three wounds, which has a maximum of 12 per month. So the A1 modifier is correct. The pricing, data analysis, and coding website defines the A9 modifier as dressing for nine or more wounds. Therefore, when submitting a claim to Medicare with the A9 modifier, a narrative is required. The narrative must indicate the number of wounds the dressing will be used for, since the definition indicates dressing for nine or more wounds. There are a couple of exceptions to the rule when billing for surgical dressings with regard to the A1 through A9 modifiers. The first of which is for gradient compression. Stocking wraps, specifically Hicks picks A6531, A6532, and A6545. These codes should not be billed with the A1 through A9 modifiers when they are used for an open venous stasis ulcer. The AW modifier should be appended to these with qualifying open venous stasis ulcers. Be aware that the A1 through A9 modifiers cannot be added, changed, or removed during the reopening process. 
These requests are too complex and must go through redeterminations because the actual codes require additional documentation and that assessment cannot be completed at the reopening level. The LCDs and policy articles can be accessed through the Neridian Medicare website by following the path listed here. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. Continue your learning experience by referring to additional recordings available on the Neridian website or YouTube channel.